Pai. Um, this is a demo of how to varnish a painting. Now this painting has been drying for a couple of days so I assume that it's totally dry. Occasionally I'm surprised so if halfway through this I start to go into hyper uh, emergency maintenance mode and uh, trying to keep things from falling apart that's because I've found that there's some aspect of the painting that is not dry. <laughs> Probably won't happen, but uh, this doesn't apply, of course, if you're varnishing an old painting that's long dry, you won't have any drama. But uh, I expect not to have any drama here. This is, this is just a retouch varnish. Uh, you'll see that it originally wasn't, but it'll come in a bottle much like this, and it'll say retouch varnish on it. It's just very dilute varnish. Now this is something called a hake brush, or maybe a hake brush, because it's Japanese, spelled H-A-K-E, and it's just something that uh, comes in inch and a half sizes, comes in three inch sizes. Uh, the, the bristles are extremely soft, they're for, you know, uh, smoothing the varnish out really nice. So you just pour it into a cup, put it in a stable position so you don't spill it, and position a light so that it creates some ugly glare on the painting so that you can tell at a glance which parts of it you've covered and which parts not. Now Janelle, if you want to, you're seeing the viewfinder, so if you want to see if you want to position the camera so you get a lot of nice glare on it, so as I'm as I'm uh, going over this, just kind of come over and reposition until you can see the the real ugly glare difference. Can you see that happening? So you, can you see how where I'm running over it? You see how it's cutting cutting down the glare on the painting. So, uh, you know, you can talk if you want. You don't have to just nod. <laughs> so as I'm going over this, it's just like painting a fence. You know, artistic, uh, no artistic um, behavior is required. You just cover it as smoothly and seamlessly as possible. And uh, it's important to get it on quickly because as soon as you put this on, it starts to dry. The, the solvent starts to evaporate and it starts to get sticky within a few minutes so what you want to do is you just want to keep dipping and spreading just like I'm doing quickly and then as soon as you've got it all covered like this then go back up the other way 90 degrees make sure all the gaps are filled in make sure that the uh, that anything that any little unevenness is spread out. You want a nice, even um, coat on this. Nice mechanical, even coat, like it was put on by a machine. Now, step two. This is an important step. Turn the camera towards me a second. And that's why I have these head magnifiers, which you don't have to use, but I like to do it this way. It's because you'll always get dust settling into the painting, so. I take some tweezers and a magnifying glass and then I go in and I put the light down close to the surface so that they really show up and then I uh, and then I start picking particles of dust and, and whatnot off of here now, uh, okay there's one now what I didn't do is get myself a stick to use as a bridge but I can but I can uh, I can I can deal so you just kind of go scan around the piece, make sure that uh, like any little things that are sticking up, probably little bits of dust that that uh, that you need to tweeze out of there, or else it'll dry that way, and then you'll have a and then you'll have something. See, I put my hand on there, so I have to smooth that out again. Stop the camera. <laughs> Okay, what I've gotten is a little uh, drawing bridge. This is just uh, something that I bought from Dick Blake and it's been altered and broken and repaired and so forth. But you can use any kind of stick, a ruler of, of any, any kind, something propped up just to put your hands on so that you, uh, so you don't do what I just did and put, uh, put a handprint on your, on your painting. 
So uh, just still here ranging far and wide looking for bits of dust. Um, looking mostly at the areas that you're going to be focusing on like the people's faces. You don't want a piece of dust growing some, from someone's head. And then, uh, and then just looking at the light areas for, for the uh, bits of small dark dust that always floats around in the air because you'll see it most obviously there. So it looks pretty good. It's pretty good now, I hope. I'm going to flip the painting around just to make sure I'm not missing something. So I'm actually being pretty lucky here. I didn't expect... Oh, there's a... There's a little hair from the from the varnish brush. Is that a hair? No, it's not. I painted that in. Okay. Uh, there's, a, there's a hair here. Okay. This part is boring. But uh, if you uh, if it's gonna bother you later, you've got to do it because you varnish that dust in, and it will never come out until the the painting is cleaned by a conservator. Okay, now I hope you can see that before there was the painting was matte. There was a lot of sunken areas in it. Now, it's all nice and glossy, and let me turn the room light out. You can probably see that all the darks really pop out nice and, uh, nice and crisply. All the colors are even. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run the bathroom fan, because now you have turpentine vapor in the air. And if you have anybody that's uh, got allergies, like Janelle, you don't want to fool around with turpentine fumes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit in here for maybe an hour or two with the fan on. And I'm going to put a light over it. The, uh, a regular incandescent light that produces heat as well as light. Not an LED. And, uh, and just let it dry. So uh, that's been your little demo of varnishing a painting. <laughs>